Welcome to this week's Engine Show. This week we are going on an adventure deep into some of Africa's wetlands. But what is a wetland? Why do we need to learn about them? Why are they important to us? The best way to find out about a wetland is to explore and investigate it. So you can join our explorers, Tuli and Ethan, who are getting ready to board a boat heading deep into the wetlands of Uganda. Hi, guys! Hi, how are you? Hello, hello. Oh, hi, hi Miss Ethan, where are we today? They were at Lake Victoria. Lake Victoria is the biggest freshwater lake in Africa. It borders Uganda, Tanzania and Kenya. We're here today to check Lake Victoria's wetland. Wetland? Wetland? What is wetland? Well, it's exactly as it sounds. It's where water meets land. Today we, we hopefully will see a bunch of living things. And hopefully we might see the king of the wetland, his majesty, <laughs> Look, here comes our guide, Miss Judith. She's a well-known bird guide naturalist. Hi, Hi Miss Judith. Judith. Hi, kids. Hi. You're welcome to Mabamba Wetland. But what exactly is a wetland? So a wetland is um, a piece of land that is either seasonally or permanently flooded with water. And then these conditions lead to plants and animals living in it. We're going to see lots of birds, we're going to see lots of plants, lots like, of fish. yes, some fish, and uh, I guess it's time for us to go. Amazing, keep us posted. That looks like a fun adventure. So I guess we should get ready to inquire, explore, scramble, wade, and discover some amazing landscapes. Learn about incredible creatures and unique habitats. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! We are learning every day. Ah, so now we know that a wetland is land that is wet. Exactly. The water might be salt water or fresh water, like a marsh, edge of a lake or ocean, a delta where a river meets a sea, or areas that regularly flood. So, if I wanted to find a wetland, where would I look? You will know when you get to a wetland because your feet will start to sink into the ground below and they'll get covered with water. Wetlands exist all over the world in every country. You can find them in polar regions as well as in the tropics. Wetlands can range in size from a small little swamp to an area larger than a country. Wetlands provide great homes for many different kinds of animals and plants. Africa has many important wetlands. An amazing wetland to explore in southern Africa is the Okavango Delta in Botswana. It's one of Africa's largest wetlands. Amazingly, you'll find all this water and life next to a desert called the Kalahari Desert, which means great thirst because it is so dry. What is a delta? A delta is where a river ends by spreading out into the sea. The Okavango River is different as it does not empty out into the sea, but into land, and the water sinks into the dry sands of the Kalahari Desert. This creates an inland delta, which is a maze of lush green, beautiful wetlands with sparkling channels to explore, islands to discover, and animals to learn about. How can you find so much water in the Kalahari Desert? I thought deserts had no water. 
far away from Botswana in the rainforests of the Congo Basin and high in the highlands of Angola rainfalls, during the rainy season, so much rain falls. In fact, it cannot be absorbed by the land, so it rushes down the river, and as the river reaches Botswana, it spreads out and sinks into the desert as a massive inland delta. The Okavanga Delta is formed. So is this a wetland? Yes. The land floods, stays wet, and voila, a beautiful wetland emerges. Animals from all over come to enjoy the water, to drink the water, play in the water, and look for food in and around the water. A huge variety of interesting plants sprout out from seeds buried in the ground. Beautiful birds arrive to snap up fish and delicious insects. The Okavango Delta is literally brimming with life. What an incredible show nature puts on in the Okavango Delta. But wait, let's check on our explorers and their wetland journey. The wetland they're visiting is different to the Okavango Delta as it's next to the edge of a lake and not a river. It's also very close to a large city, but it still houses a wide variety of wildlife. Even before they started their boat journey, they already spotted lots of interesting birds. It's weavers, look. Look at those interesting crafty nests they make. So in weavers, the males do the construction of the nests and the females come and appreciate the nests. If the females like the nest, then they can keep the nest. If the female doesn't like the nest, she moves on onto the next male partner. So if this nest is rejected, like this was rejected, I found it on the ground, it's abandoned and they have to either leave it or destroy it and start the process again. So weavers are very good at uh, architecture. They weave their nests and that's where the name weavers comes from. So this nest is made out of grass. It has uh, some, some leaves from trees. It has some bits of papyrus, which is very evident that we are near the wetland. It was poorly built. Clearly, you can see it doesn't look nice at all. I would reject it as well. Let's go. Let's go. We're learning every day. Hold on a minute. What's happening? It looks like our explorers are stuck. The boatman is having to use a stick to push his way through the water and the plants. All those beautiful plants that float on the water are making it hard to pass. It really is both wet with water and with plants, like land. I think they managed to get unstuck. They pushed and pushed their way through. They were able to adapt to being in the wetland. Everything alive needs to adapt to its environment in order to be able to survive. Just the same way you need a life jacket to be on a boat or a warm coat when you're up in a mountain or a big sun hat when you're standing in the hot sun, wildlife needs to adapt too. But they do it over hundreds and thousands of years. On the left, on the short vegetation, is the shoebill. Ethan, yes, if you look straight. Yes, if you look out straight from. Tuli? Tuli? Oh, I know, I can see it, I can see it. Yes, that's the shoebill. I think our explorers have seen something. It looks nothing like I've seen before. It looks like a huge bird. It looks like it could almost be a dinosaur. Stop, everybody! Stop laughing! As we know, it's His Majesty, the Shoebill. Oh, it looks... Tiger. I can see his face! It looks so big! Ooh, ooh, look at his face! Look at his face! Yes, yeah, so the Shoebill is so big, he's the king of African wetlands. 
So the shoebill can be found in wetlands all the way from southern Sudan to Zambia. So the shoebills are about 150 centimeters tall. How tall are you, Ethan? I'm 139 centimeters tall. But it's almost as tall as you are. Why does it look so strange? So the shoebill has been in existence for really a long time. And the strange look protects it from predators. And it really has a strange looking beak. It has an unusual beak that is perfectly adapted to feeding in muddy water where prey is difficult to target. A huge beak improves the chances of success. They get their name from their beak because it's shaped like a shoe. Like all birds, they're descendants of dinosaurs. Their feet and claws look very similar to many dinosaur fossils. Shoebills do not fly very far. They usually only fly about 20 meters. They rather like to just hop around the wetlands. They like to live undisturbed, so are often in hard to reach places. They usually lay two eggs on a nice bit of vegetation floating on the water so they can still be near their food. Once the chicks are born, they have huge sibling rivalry. They fight pushing each other out of the nest. So how is it adapted to the wetlands? It has very long legs, and as it spends lots of time in the wetlands walking on difficult bits of floating vegetation, it uses its big wings for balance. This helps it to stay upright when it's walking and hunting its favorite food. The shoebills like to stay in the hot sun, and what do they do to keep cool? They have feathers on their bodies, but the legs will lose a lot of heat, so they pull on their legs. Ew, that's disgusting. disgusting. Put it on your legs. I know. We don't do that when we're hot. Right now, as you see it walking, when it stretches the neck forward, he's fishing, you know, he's looking for something to eat. And they do bill clapping or bill clattering. So this is how they clap the bills together. <laughs> they like to eat lungfish. This is their favorite food. And seeing as the lungfish love swampy wetlands, so do shoebills. So this is a lungfish, and it is a delicacy for the shoebill. So the lungfish is able to live in, a, in the wetland. They like shallow waters. It settled here almost 400 million years ago, even before the dinosaurs. So it is very well adapted to life in the swamp. The lungfish need air every half an hour to breathe, otherwise it will drown. Most fish have gills and can breathe underwater, but because of all the vegetation in the swamp, there's very little oxygen. The lungfish has adapted to life in the oxygen-starved wetland by looking for little air bubbles on the surface and then quickly flipping up and swallowing the bubbles whole and going back down. But this has dangers. When they come out to they breathe, that is the down. opportunity moment for the shoebill to grab and touch. If the shoebill eats the lungfish, what does the lungfish eat? Lungfish eat plants, frogs, little fish, and seeds. So the other plants that you'll find in the wetland are water lilies. So water the water lilies. lilies. Oh, they look pretty. Yes. They can grow oh, so wow. long. Have and you they have ever a seen sweet... a flower? Have you ever seen a flower this big? And they have a sweet scent. So if you just smell and tell me what you. Ah. Oh. The, that is the African jacana. Have you seen it? Yes. So the African jacana is also known as a lily trotter. Yes, they walk on lilies. They also call it the Jesus bird because in the Bible Jesus walked on water. So the African jacana has very long claws for walking from one lily to another. It's a long-toed lapwing. It has long toes. 
they have a red eye or pink eye. Can everybody see the eye? So what the long-toed lapwing, what they often do, the male and the female, one can make noise to distract you from seeing the chick or the nest, but the nest or the young ones are found in some other place. young explorers are looking closely at a plant that looks long and straight. Mm -hmm. I think it's papyrus. The papyrus is the dominant vegetation in this wetland. So the papyrus is a very tall vegetation, can grow up to six meters high. It's adapted to living in the wetlands. It has air pockets that help it to keep afloat. The papyrus provides a valuable resource to the communities living here. Some people can harvest them to make things like these beautiful papyrus mats. They use the stalks for making weaving baskets. They use the stalks for searching houses. This is the top part of the papyrus. They use it for making brooms. By the way, do you know that this plant once changed world history? What do you mean? Around 3000 BC, the Egyptians would create the amazing new writing material, papyrus. It was adopted by the Greeks and was used extensively in the Roman Empire. Actually, the word paper takes its origin from the ancient Greek word papyrus or papyrus. Wow, our explorers have seen so many things. So wetlands must be very important then if they provide homes and habitats for so many. Yes, and they also act as safe nurseries for baby birds and fish. If the wetlands are to be destroyed, animals and wildlife can find themselves homeless. Their families can even die out because there are no feeding or nesting sites. If the wildlife reduces, fishermen can find it hard to catch fish, make a living, and keep their families. In Sudan and Rwanda, wetlands are used for very important rice farming, which provides a valuable food source. Most importantly, the wetlands are the world's natural water filters. They filter the water that enters the lakes or rivers or seas. They trap the chemicals, fertilizers, and other pollutants that run into our water supply and into all the habitats of the wetlands. Let's do a simple experiment, which can show how wetlands can help to stop floods by absorbing water as well as act as a water filter, slowly releasing clean water. You need washing up sponge, a carved plastic bottle, dirty water in a bottle or cup, and an empty cup. See, the dirty water goes through the sponge and becomes less dirty. All that dirt stays on the sponge. The sponge acts like the wetland. It absorbs and cleans the water. Without the wetlands, cities would have to spend a lot more money treating water to make sure it's safe. Wetlands also provide us with storm protection. As a big storm hits the web of vegetation, it acts like a barrier or buffer that slows down storms and hurricanes that form across the water before it reaches land. So when the storm hits the land, it arrives with less force and creates less damage. The wetlands can reduce the power of destruction. What happens if wetlands disappear? All these roles that they play in the environment would be gone. First of all, wetlands control flooding. So if you see the wetlands that have disappeared because of agriculture, so you'll find such a place gets flooded. And then again, the water is likely to dry. Once the water dries, then we have no water to use at home. The temperatures will become hot. It will not be as cool as it is. So it's bad for our planet? Yes, it's very bad. We need wetlands to stay.
Look what an amazing time our young explorers had. Tourism means you can enjoy the wetlands, appreciate and marvel at nature, bring money to the communities and help to conserve the wetlands for the future. Science, you and me. There are times when we feel sad, angry, or worried. This is normal and happens to everyone, but it can prevent us from doing well at school, sports, or from enjoying our time with friends and family. Here's how to calm your body, clear your mind, and deal with troubling feelings. Let's learn how to focus and feel good again. When we are faced with unexpected challenges or unknown future, we can feel scared and lonely. In times like these, it is important to remember what makes us feel safe and strong. This might be our family or friends, our beliefs, or even our commitment to a goal for the future. These are our roots and they keep us grounded. Think about your roots. What makes you feel strong and grounded in your life? Today, I want you to imagine that you are a tree. Stand up, close your eyes and place your feet firmly in the ground. Your feet are your roots. Take a deep breath. Now, straighten your body and stand tall and proud. Your body is your trunk. Take a deep breath. Stretch your arms over your head or from side to side. These are your branches. Take a deep breath. Imagine that a strong wind comes along with rain. You can feel the rough weather coming from all directions. Focus on your feet planted firmly in the ground. These are your roots and they will keep you from being knocked over by the storm. Take a deep breath. When you feel uncertain, focus on your roots. Remember, just like the proverb says, when the roots are deep, there's no reason to fear the wind. It's time for a brain booster. Which of the following is true? Wetlands are the world's natural water filters. Wetlands act as storm protectors and stop floods. Wetlands are homes to many different kinds of animals and plants. All of the above. the above statements are true. Wetlands trap chemicals, fertilizers, and other pollutants that run into our water supply. Wetlands also act like a barrier that slows down storms. And many species of animals and plants rely on wetlands as their home and breeding grounds. Wetlands are so important and useful. Which of these birds is a shrewbill? The answer is B. This is a shrewbill that takes its name from a distinctly shaped beak. What plant that grows in the wetlands was used by the ancient Egyptians to make paper and nowadays is used for making mats, roofs, and brooms? A, palm tree, B, banana plant, C, papyrus. Well done. Let's go. You and me. It's time to say bye to our young explorers. Thank you, Judith. We had a wonderful time. You're so welcome. It's been a really exciting trip. Nice to meet you guys. Bye. Bye, bye guys. Welcome. Thank you. Wow. It seems you can learn so much by visiting a wetland. Yes, it's a wonderful experience. Can you think of any wetlands near you? Are you able to visit some? It's important we conserve, look after and appreciate our wetlands. They are disappearing fast as cities grow. 
Until next time, keep on inquiring, keep on discovering, and keep on learning. Bye!